You may have likely heard about the method of calculating your maximum heart rate being 220 minus your age in years. It's simple and easy, which is why most people use it and why it's stuck around for so long. But it's flawed in so many ways and actually the original research pertaining to this equation is quite worrying. So stick around and I'll tell you the story of how it all went about. The first place to start is to actually understand why heart rate maximum is actually useful. For example, you can use specific percentages of heart rate max to determine certain training zones, which will come about with specific training adaptations, which you can use appropriately to meet your training goals. Predicted heart rate max is also used as a secondary criteria to verify if you've hit your VAT max or not, which is a great predictor of endurance performance and cardiovascular health. So the use of heart rate max actually does have some utility in the practical world. However, it can only be as useful as it is accurate and it's the accuracy which we're really questioning in this video. So in 2002, Robugs and Land were published in the Journal of Exercise Physiology, an almost review paper, much like a detective paper in fact, on the surprising history of the heart rate max equals 220 minus age equation. And this video was directly motivated by this paper. And I'll be explaining what they found because it is quite, quite surprising and actually quite worrying. One of the biggest issues that propped up immediately was that the citation for the equation was both inconsistent and also a myth from most educational textbooks. And this is an immediate red herring with regards to research, because we cite things in order to back up our arguments or theories with primary research. It would be logical to assume that this equation was derived from one piece of research, and therefore everyone should be citing that one piece of research, but this is not what they found. So, in order to understand the first flaw with the equation, we need to uh, do some excelling, which is good fun because we all love Microsoft Excel. Um, uh, I'll, I'll speed this bit up. So, if you actually plot the equation on what it predicts, this is what it should look like. With every year you increase in age, your heart rate max should decrease by one in a nice inverse proportion. Uh, so th th does this what it look like in real life? Turns out it actually looks a little bit like this. It's really a non-linear relationship um, for the first 10 years. And then there is this gradual decline in heart rate max. But this does not mean that it occurs at a one-to-one -one ratio with your age. One of the main things to take away from this graph is the individual variability at a given age. As you can see, there's a lot of error from the actual um, average line, the red line. There's a lot of deviation from this, which means the equation itself is not very good at predicting um, the heart rate maximum of specific individuals. And in fact, in this data set, they found a correlation coefficient of 0.43, which is a moderate correlation. However, we'd expect to see if the heart rate max was equal to 220 minus age, a correlation coefficient of 1.0. What they actually found from real data was that the error was approximately 11 beats per minute using a single equation that uses age to predict someone's heart rate maximum. So just using age does not appear to be enough to predict someone's heart rate maximum. Nonetheless, they did some digging and actually found the original research paper pertaining to the 220 minus age equation from Fox et al. But the issue was Fox never did any regression analysis on the data points he had. And this figure actually represents a replication made by Robux and Landwehr in their paper that we're talking about. So they plotted the graph again, did regression analysis, and they found that the equation was not 220 minus age, it was 215.4 minus 0.9147 times age. So you might be thinking, what's the difference between the red line and the blue line? Well, the red line is the 220 minus age equation, and the blue line is Roberg's and Landwehr's actual equation that they found using Fox's original data. And so where did the error from Fox come from? Perhaps by the fact that he visually looked at the graph and estimated that it looked close to 220 minus age, and that was that. That's the origin of the 220 minus age equation. He looked at the graph and said, hey, it falls close to this equation. There we go. Hopefully you can tell that he was kind of wrong. 
and it's not very scientific to estimate equations when you could easily do regression analysis to find the actual values to go with the line. The other problem with this data set is that no one was measured below the age of 20. So this equation, even though it's wrong, it also doesn't take into account possible differences with those under the age of 20, which as we saw earlier, there might actually be a non-linear relationship between heart rate max and age. Further, who's to say that age is the variable that determines what someone's heart rate max is? There has been various studies that have looked at the relationship between age and heart rate max in many populations, and the findings have been very inconsistent, suggesting that there are likely other variables that play a role in determining someone's heart rate maximum. Interestingly, Robergs and Landwehr collated all of these equations into one super equation, compared it to the 220 minus age, and also two other equations that had been derived from similar meta-analyses on the topic at different dates. A meta-analysis is a big study whereby lots of individual studies of a particular topic are synthesized to try and understand overall trends or effects of something. In this case, it looked at many studies looking at age and heart rate maximum. This is what it looked like. They're all showing a similar downward trend with age, but the 220 minus age equation firstly has a much higher y-intercept than the other equations, and also it slopes down a lot quicker than the other equations do as well. Probably because it was guessed in the first place. Interestingly though, again, the x-axis show that no one tested under the age of 20 was used, and in another paper published in the Journal of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology, found that the 220 minus age equation does not predict heart rate maximum in these specific populations of children and adolescents. In fact, there was no apparent relationship with age whatsoever with heart rate maximum, suggesting that age does not predict heart rate maximum in these populations. And in regards to the practical application or the problem with not having a good equation, is that such an error could result in the child being unable to maintain the exercise intensity for a sufficiently long period of time to obtain a training effect or unnecessary disencouragement on the part of the child, parent or therapist, since the exercise task would appear to be more difficult than one would expect given the exercise intensity. So using bad equations can lead to bad results which can discourage people. And if we go back to Robugs and Landwehr's paper, they actually pointed out that the equations back then in 2002 were not accurate enough to be using for heart rate training zones because the error can be in excess of 11 beats per minute. And perhaps one of the reasons we are seeing lots of error in these equations is because that they're only using age alone to predict heart rate maximum. There have been studies which have used multivariate regression analysis to predict heart rate maximum and have found much higher correlation coefficients, suggesting that heart rate max appears to be dependent or influenced by more than just age alone. However, one of the issues pointed out is that the authors of these regression equations did not provide information with regards to how each independent variable increased the ability of the model to predict the variance in heart rate maximum. What this essentially means is that we don't know how important each independent variable in these multivariate regression analysis equations actually are. I thought it would be fun to do a little bit more debunking and also teach you some interesting things. Um, we know from observations from science that the concept of heart rate max following an inverse relationship with age is wrong because we can change people's heart rate maxes simply by training them or detraining them or comparing them to sedentary counterparts. We know that if we put someone through endurance training, they're likely to show a decrease in their heart rate maximum. And if we then follow them for a period of detraining, their heart rate maximum then starts to creep back up. And if we compare endurance athletes to matched sedentary people of similar age, ethnicities, genders, etc., we see that the endurance athletes on average have a much lower heart rate maximum than the sedentary counterparts. So there's been a movement in the use of heart rate max equations using age to be age specific and also population specific. So the best equation out there would depend on your age and also the population you're from and therefore there's going to be a lot of equations out there that might be useful or not to you. If you're a recreational endurance athlete 
which you'd probably use heart rate max quite a bit and therefore this would be useful to you. Um, the proposed equations done in research just a year ago was 118 minus 1.8 times age. Um, but the authors did comment that approximately 67% of the population or the people who use it should fall within plus or minus 8 beats per minute of their actual heart rate maximum. So you can use this equation with an error of approximately plus or minus 8 beats per minute. And for approximately 5% of the population, the use of this equation might actually be different to your actual heart rate maximum by more than 15 beats per minute which is one of the issues you're always going to have with trying to estimate variables. But it's also recommended by the authors that when necessary or when possible, a direct measurement of heart rate maximum should be made. And if you have access to exercise testing facilities or if you're in good health, you might do it by yourself. Um, follow a typical view to max protocol and you'll be able to find your heart rate maximum pretty easily. Hopefully that's of some help, but, you know, research is still going on and I can't answer everything. Bye!